I'm currently in Dundee and right behind me is the Discovery, a huge ship that's parked right next door to Dundee Railway Station. And today's video does have kind of ships involved but nothing to do with boats or ships. As we're looking at a railway line which used to operate from harbours between Burns Island and Tayport. But we look at the railway stations that were owned by the Edinburgh and Northern Railway between Dundee and Mark Inch. So I'm going to head into the railway station now to catch our first train. So we're now on the platform at Dundee railway station. Just want to briefly mention that last night when I got into Dundee after doing that Highland Bay Line challenge is that the Royal Scots were actually parked up at Dundee station. And the reason I'm mentioning that is because we will be seeing that today in the video a bit further down the line. Also, I did mention that most of the stations when opened had two ferry connections at Burns Island and Tayport. That's because the Tay Bridge and the Fourth Rail Bridge weren't built yet. But one railway station that we are going to was built roughly when the Tay Bridge did open, and that is Lucas. I am waiting for the 0933 Cross Country Service to take us there this is the Aberdeen to Penzance train, but for some reason today, it's actually starting at Montrose. So we have now made it to Lucas and when you look at this station for the first time you're thinking hang on am I in the middle of nowhere because it does look like that to be honest but to be honest I think the village of Lucas is just in that direction over there just a few minutes walk from the railway station but honestly the last time I actually came here I did actually go to St Andrews on the bus and the Spirit of Scotland's railway ticket which I'm using does allow you to travel on that bus to St Andrews The station that I'm currently standing on was opened on the 1st of June 1878 by the North British Railway. It actually replaced the earliest station. The earliest station was 45 chains north from here, which opened on the 17th of May 1848, but closed in 1878. And that was built by the Edinburgh Northern Railway. But that station did reopen shortly after they Lucas Old. 1st of July 1852, it became a junction for the line towards St Andrews, but that closed in 1969. And the line towards Tayport, which was the original line, that closed in 1967. Last time I was at Lucas, I remembered it used to have set of full signals, but they're long since gone, apart from one which is down at the southern end of the platform enjoying its retirement. Bolsey, Lucas, it's a lovely location to be honest for filming trains, but we shall be leaving Lucas now on the 1053 Scotrail service to take us to Cooper, our next station down the line as I head towards Mark Inch.
So we have now reached Cooper, which is the next station down the line, and unfortunately it has started raining. But to be honest, though, I think the rain was expected today. And honestly, you don't really get much trade sometimes at Cooper. I'm literally like relying on two LNER services passing through Cooper Station just to easily make a video at trains at Cooper. But unfortunately the raid's going to be worse for the rest of the day now, but we only got two more stations to go after this one. So Cooper Station opened as Cooper Road on the 1st of March 1847 by the Edinburgh and Northern Railway as a temporary terminus of the line until it reached Tay Port in 1850. By then, the Edinburgh and Northern Railway was renamed to the Edinburgh, Perth and Dundee Railway. Now the station buildings were wooden at the time when it opened, but in 1890 it was renamed to Cooper and 1894 the station buildings were replaced to what you see today by the North British Railway. Honestly, this bridge down at the southern end of Cooper Station just looks magnificent. Really magnificent, and I do like that to be honest. However though, we shall be leaving Cooper on the 12 o'clock Scotrail service to take us to the next station down the line, Lady Bank. Lady Bank is also the junction where the Tayport branch actually starts as well, but I'll explain more when we get to our next station. Let's just get that train now to Lady Bank. So we have now reached Lady Bank and this station is very unusual because the Edinburgh Perth services and the Perth to Edinburgh services can only use platform 2 here because beyond the north end of the station there is a junction and a passing loop. Sometimes you may see trains from Perth to Edinburgh stop there to allow the Edinburgh to Perth service to depart first before they can enter the station. Platform 1 which is where I'm currently standing on can see services from Cooper heading towards this way. And just south of the station there is a junction so the trains from Perth can cross over onto the other line. <laughs> Ladybank Station opens on the 17th September 1847 by the Edinburgh and Northern Railway as a junction station for their services from Burns Island towards Cooper, later to Tayport, and also services to Lindors, later to Perth. Speaking of Perth, the line from Ladybank to Perth did close to passengers on the 9th of September 1955, but was reinstated in 1975 when they realised it was a quicker route for passenger services from Perth towards Edinburgh. So I'm just about to leave Ladybank and honestly it's still raining and I think it may have gotten a little bit worse to be honest. The question is though, do I want to go to Markinch or not? Yes, because as I mentioned at the start of the video about the Royal Scotsman, because I'm planning to capture that at Markinch station and honestly it may not turn out good on film, but we'll give it a go anyway. So I waited for the 1307 Scotrail service to take us to Markinch. So we have now reached the fourth and final station, Mark Inch. 
and hopefully the rain is easing off a little bit. I know it's still raining, but it's not as bad as it was at Lady Bank. And this is also where we captured the Royal Scotsman as well, which passes through here about 1433 from Edinburgh Waverley to the boat at Garton, which is basically the Strats Fay Railway. Markage Station was opened on the 11th of July 1847 by the Edinburgh and Northern Railway. When the station was opened though, it had wooden structures, wooden buildings. The North British Railway replaced them in 1890. And you can just see that house behind me there that I'm pointing at. That's not a house. That is the station building that the North British Railway rebuilt in 1890. However though, it does have a modern station building, which is just right here. And honestly, that really does look good next to the old station building. Also at Mark Inch Railway Station, they do have Class 3 lighted pendolinos here. And you're wondering to yourself, well, hang on, the lines are electrified. How can you have pendolinos at Mark Inch and they don't even serve this part of Scotland? That's because they're just in the station building right behind me there. You can just make one out right now, which I'll just put on screen. There's a pendolino at Mark Inch Station. So I've decided how I'm going to get the Royal Scotsman. Luckily, on this platform that I'm standing on, there's nothing to bowl me out the way. So I'm going to use the footbridge that's right behind me there and literally stand under the footbridge, hopefully a bit dry, so I get the Royal Scotsman passing through here. And that is one of Scotland's most luxury trains, that is. Operated by Belmont using GBRF Class 66 diesel locomotives, that was the Royal Scotsman that passed through Mark Inch. I just had a quick look on their website to see how much a cabby would be. And honestly, when I looked at the prices and saw that it cost about nine grand, I was thinking, what the f Who would pay nine grand for that, seriously? Luckily though, I won't be because I'll be leaving Markage on the 1456 Scotrail service and I'm going straight to Edinburgh. So right behind me is Edinburgh Wavy Station. We have reached Edinburgh. And I'm filming this on Jacob's Ladders. Edinburgh Waverley does look magnificent and so does the four stations we looked at today. When the North British Railway redesigned the station buildings, they had their own charm to it. And seeing the Royal Scotsman at Markinch has really been brilliant to see as well. Video is popping up right here. Feel free to give that a click. Keep it on screen now, YouTube channel members and Patreon supporters. Thank you for supporting the channel. I've been Simon Trades. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you on board the Cyber Express for the next journey down the line.